So here we are in Maya, I've just opened up the Maya scene and all I've really done so far is just pull down the render settings. So I pull down the overall render settings here so it renders a little bit quicker and I've put the test resolution down to 75%. So I'm just going to save the current version of the well so that we can compare it as we work through some of the changes. So I'm just going to pull down the overall settings actually a little bit further. I'll put it down to two and one here and let's actually pull it down to render at 50% just for a little while just to get it to render through pretty quickly okay and that's all i'm going to do to the render settings for now so i've just taken a second to lay out my interface here to make it a little bit easier to read and let's just do a quick scene overview so we can see that we've got our well here and it is split up into different parts if i if i was to take a look at my hyper shade here i can see that i've got three different materials in here but having investigated just briefly i can find that in fact there's only one of these being used it's this guy here so you can just graph that guy so i only have one material to describe like the wood the metal and the stone and stuff like that so i'm going to need a few more uh, we've got a map coming in here with occlusion roughness and metallic and we've got the base color the way that this is hooked up here doesn't make a huge amount of sense right at the moment we're taking the out alpha and we need to go and check but we we've got a pack map we can see it with the colors here so it's packed into the rgb but we're taking the out alpha and putting it into the, into the specular roughness so we need to go and check that and then we've got the base color just here so this map will need to be rebuilt a little bit but let's go and take a look at the model first and then we can come back and sort out our shader now i don't intend to do a huge amount of modeling here Often what you find when you go modeling is that you start off fixing one small little thing and before you know it you end up rebuilding the whole lot. Probably some easy enough things that we can go and fix. If we go and grab our UV editor we want to be a little bit careful here. I want to avoid a situation where I'm remodeling things and then having to re-UV map it. And that basically means I can't move around any verts or I can't create too many new faces. I'm probably safe enough to go in and put in edge loops and that's really one of the main issues with the sharp edges that we don't have enough supporting edge loops. Uh, so I'm going to give that a try just to start off with. Just in terms of the overall UV map we can see that we can see that it's been automatically UV'd so it could the UVs could be neater and they could make better use of texture space. Particularly I think this is the the bottom of the wall with all the rocks in it. I'd like to see that be significantly bigger so we get more detail into those areas uh, most likely a lot of this stuff up here you either don't see it or it's not all that important so all that could be shrunk down and just dumped over into a corner now i don't really want to go back and redo the uv so i'm going to work with what i've got just for the moment and we'll see how far we get so i'm just going to isolate these guys here and i'm going to separate them out into separate objects so now we've got our separate pieces yeah that's fine okay and if i was to go in here and just start taking a look yeah you can see this uh so you can see that there is not a lot of polygons on these shapes and that would be fine if we were going into a game engine but we're rendering with arnold and arnold will handle lots and lots of geometry so i'd like to put in some edge loops just to tighten up these edges now i don't intend to go through all the steps in modeling it's really a look dev exercise so i'll probably forward through a lot of this but uh, i'll just do this bit to start off with and then i'll forward through the rest of it and it, you know it's, it's really very simple this is wood so i actually don't need to worry about getting really sharp edges i kind of want soft edges so i can stay quite wide with my loops now i could use a bevel if i wanted to have them all the same but i actually want the variation in here so that's starting to hold up those edges a little bit better and we'll just put in one here and we'll put in a completely different one there and now we're starting to get much softer edges over here and um, we're starting to catch this highlight this beveled edge here which we won't get over here it'll be very sharp and this seems like a small thing but it's not really as the model moves around you'll start to see it catch the highlights as it moves through 360 degrees so that will help quite a lot i need to do the same thing for uh, the other shapes just through here uh, so i'm going to forward through this and i'll come back to you when it's done so I just added edge loops onto the various pieces of wood here and we can see that there are the edge loops running across here and then once I've done this one I just duplicated it across. So that gets me this softer edge 
softer bevel edge running along here which is what i was after now because all i've done really is add edge loops and i haven't adjusted the model other than that my uvs are still holding up so all it's done is add extra edges here if i move these edges around if i start to pull verts in and out or extrude faces in and out that is going to cause problems with the uvs i'll get more faces that will be dotted over my uv map and i'll have to go and pull them all in and match them all up along here and i don't want to have to do that so really i am limited in terms of the amount of changes that i can make to the model but as it happens all i'm trying to do is soften up the edges i'm not trying to remodel anything now if i come out of isolated mode so i just deselect everything and then hit shift and i and it'll pull me out of isolated mode that pulls me back into the overall scene now there was a few other uh, items to be dealt with this little guy here had to be softened off and you can see that the modeling here needs to be softened around the edges and we're going to separate these two pieces they're made of different materials so they should be separated out so i'm going to take a look at doing that now and i'll come back to you when it's done uh, so i've gone ahead and i've added an edge loop uh, to this model just around the end here and i added another one just at the other end and i just quadded off the, the top cap uh, I could go and do more modeling work here. I should, I could go and put another edge loop on the inside here and I could try and clean this up a little bit more. But I just need to watch my time and the amount of overall time I want to spend modeling. So that's going to help a little bit for now. So that will soften it off so I get that. I, I still am getting a sharp edge here. I need to extrude in an edge there. But time is of the essence. And in this particular case here, I think I'm just going to give it a quick bevel. And I will increase the amount of segments. And we can play around with this a little bit and just soften off that entire piece. Something like that will do just fine for there, just to speed it up a little bit. So that's looking a little bit softer, like it would actually uh, be made out of wood. Okay, so the next piece we're going to take a look at is this guy. And again, suffers from somewhat similar problem. This is a metal bar running through here, I guess. And this is going to be... A piece of stone so really these should be separated out uh, so i'm going to separate them out and i'm going to try running some edge loops around it just to soften them up a little bit uh, so i've just gone through and broken up these models so i it was all one piece and i've broken this up into just a metal bar so i separated them re and recombined them and then this is a separate piece here and then i went and added some edge loops to hold up some of the shapes here now in the case of this particular model here we have a rather large end gun sitting at the end of this model and i should probably go and delete these faces fill the hole and then rebuild it but i'm not going to do that i'm not going to start remodeling the thing uh, so i'm just going to take a look here so that's those pieces uh, kind of dealt with a little bit better and i get some nice kind of highlights towards the end of that cap there uh, with the rope here uh, the rope is very uh, it's faster at the moment so i can I can just smooth that one off and that looks a little bit cleaner. Uh, so in real life this rope would be all bunched up and would be overlapping itself. Uh, so that would be something to consider doing here. And if I wanted to do that uh, kind of in a modeling way, I guess soft select can work for me. And the thing I would need to look at in my soft select settings is just to make sure that uh, when I come in here and let's say select that face. And I just want to make sure that soft select is set to surface instead of volume so when it's set to volume it's going to grab everything within a big sphere when it's set to surface it will only grab things on this particular surface so if i was to make the soft selection size much smaller and then start growing it you'll start to see that it starts to grow along the length of the rope so it's growing out in a helix now along the length of the rope so i'm actually grabbing just this section here rather than everything within the area and then i could start moving it around and overlapping it etc and kind of bunching the whole thing up uh, so that would help quite a lot there just to make that look a little bit neater and tidier okay so we've looked at beveling the edges for these areas here now we would need to do the same for the roof and we need to do something similar for down here uh, for the roof the roof is all in one section i would be inclined to have this v section here uh, the apex of the roof be one section and these slats be completely separate models and they're all modeled together at the moment um, so and then that way i could move the planks to have little gaps so you could see through and things like that which would help make it feel a little bit more handmade and a little bit more rustic right 
Um, so I will go through and I will put uh, edge loops around this piece. And okay, I might be putting in quite a few edge loops. I don't really care at this point. I'm going towards rendering. So I'll add in as many polys as I need. Uh, this thing isn't going to deform anyway. So I should be fine. And I'll go ahead and do that. And that will be a lot of the edge loops added. And then we can take a look at this bottom piece here. And then past that, then we can uh, take a look at uh, adding some materials. Uh, so I've just gone through and added a whole lot of loops onto this roof here. And there was a small little bit of a modeling fix to do in one or two places. Uh, I'm, I'm pinning everything back so I don't get too much texture stretching. So I put in lots and lots of loops here. And it's softened up my edges for me. So I've got a nicer edge running down along here. And it all feels a little bit softer and a little bit more wood-like. In fact, I'm just going to go and add another smooth onto this. Uh, just for now, I'll just smooth it off a little bit more. Okay, so that's the roof done. And there was a little bit more work in terms of adding the edge loops into this shape because it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, but I just plowed through. Now the next section to look at is the stone part of the well down here. There's going to be a little bit more involved in that because we want to break up the edges here. So we'll have to take a look at displacement. So we'll look at that in the next video.